have you ever encountered a situation uh, that was funny in terms of people not knowing really what your role was, uh, mistaking you uh, for the wife or the ambassador, underestimating you uh, so that you could exploit that to your advantage. Um, so I'm going to start with Clemencia and I'll, I'll let the other two think. And I'll just share with you one of the things that I thought was most amusing. Uh, a lot of people have enormous difficulty in the highly sort of protocol bound world of diplomacy knowing what to call you and they stumble all over whether it's MERS or ambassadress, which it is not, uh, and calling you whether it's um, uh, Mr. or Ms. or something else. They, they have great difficulty with that. Uh, and in India, uh, it was so difficult for them that at one stage, I was introduced as Madam Ambassador High Commissioner Penny Wensley, Australia's man in India. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> now, Clemencia, have you ever had any similar experience? Well, I would say that on the occasion of the presentation of credentials, in a certain country, and I went with my husband, he was accompanying me, and then the master of ceremonies made a mistake and called him ambassador and told me to go to the next room in order to wait for the foreign minister. So I had, I had to clarify what it, was, what it was all about. But I would also say, and I shared this coming to you when we spoke on the phone, that uh, the multilateral atmosphere is more adver adversarial to women than the bilateral. Mm -hmm. I felt that in, in Geneva when I became PR of, uh, of Colombia. And there, it's the only occasion when I have felt that I have to gain respect and credibility as a profession. You can reach a very high level of credibility, but you have to show that you're up to the job, especially in the multilateral scenarios. Thank you. Um, there's a point. Yep. Um, I must say, I've had countless of these. <laughs> that they, they, they don't see who you are. They think you're the secretary, you know, but with a small S, not the capital S, of course. Um, and Whenever, sorry, whenever I go somewhere with my, my husband or my, my male spouse, or when we are uh, receiving people uh, in the residence, countless guests just head for him <laughs> because they think he, he, he's a man, so he must be the ambassador. Um, the, but the funniest thing I, I, I encountered was when we were in Lithuania, and um, I was... Uh, Ambassador, and we were at a garden party of a, uh, another Western, Western, very Western modern embassy, I will not name. And he had been talking uh, the whole night with a very nice, pleasant talk with a, uh, with, a, uh, with a member of that embassy. And at the end of the evening, it turned out that his, the, the one he was talking to was under the impression that he was the ambassador and, and not me. So he had talked the whole evening with it. What do I do? <laughs> um, does it bother me? Uh, sometimes, when I, when I see, when I, I can perceive it as, as really uh, sexist. Yeah. Uh, but most of the time I use it, as you said. Yeah. I just use it because they, they feel very embarrassed, most of them. <laughs> Absolutely very embarrassed. <laughs> they don't know what to do with themselves, so. I, haven't, I don't have to say anything, I don't have to do anything, and I'm already way, way, way before. <laughs> way, way in front, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just hold it up. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, there are countless incidents like that. Uh, for me, it was even more complex because I married a uh, colleague who was 11 years senior to me. And uh, this was a taboo because uh, foreign services generally, internationally, are not known for married couples. They're usually 
single because the foreign service life is so demanding yeah. that uh, whether male or female, it's difficult to keep a family. And let alone keeping a family, I married a colleague, so the whole ministry was kind of jaw robbing what's going on here. <laughs> and then worst, that I also became pregnant. So with this big stomach, I was walking in the corridors of the foreign office, and people would not understand if I'm an officer or I'm a wife. But for me, what was important was that my femininity and my feminism go together. Yeah. I was not willing to sacrifice either. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, when my husband retired, wherever we went, people would receive him first anyway, <laughs> you know. And he would say, no, she's the boss. So now he doesn't even call himself ambassador. He said, I'm the second half because uh, people rush to him. He looks ambassadorial because he's ambassador. <laughs> For um, me to get my place, uh, it's always, uh, you know, it's a cliche that if you're feminine, they don't think you're smart, you know. They don't think you're capable of doing anything serious. But this is the whole battle as a woman. That you guard your femininity, you carry yourself with grace, and yet you show that you're smart, you can talk sense, and you can fight for your country, for your cause, the things in which you believe. Thank you. Right.